Friends, uh, whatever slides I show is the one which motivated me to do, take this idea of organic terrace gardening. The first slide what you see is the organic tomato Ganesha. This what happened was, there is a stud farm in Bangalore, they came to us asking that there is a fetal death of about 60 to 70 percent. And we are agriculturists, not uh, veterinary doctors. And uh, we said that, but they said, no, you come and check. When we went there, the loose run, what they were feeding to the cattle, I mean to the horses, and the water, and the soil was highly contaminated with DDT and DHC. When it can do such a damage to such a big mammal, what it can do for us? So we changed all that and the, we started growing vegetables. And after three years, the first harvest, we found a tomato like this. Then we thought it's a good omen. We took him to the lab, converted him to Ganesha. And that's my organic tomato Ganesha. And the other things which prompted us to do, uh, this after we started this, while going through the literature, all this added up to our interest in organic terrace garden. That is only when the last tree has died, when the last river has been poisoned, and the last fish has been caught, we will realize that money cannot buy anything, or money, you cannot eat money. See, today, a lot of IT guys earn a salary of 4 lakhs, 5 lakhs, like that per month. But if the rice is about 5,000 rupees a kg, which will be there very shortly, you have money, but you don't have rice to buy it. That is the time we are reaching. So this is another thing which prompted us. And we do not, see this is a statement by a Red Indian called as Seattle, that this land is not inherited by our parents. This is leased by our children and grandchildren. So we have to leave this a better place for our children to live. And there is enough for everybody's need, but not for the great. That's what our great Mahatma Gandhi's statement. I think all the management students know about it. And then coming to the last, industrialize or perish. Dr. Visheshwaraya told this statement oh, early in the time. But if he would have lived today, he would have told industrialize and perish. Why is that? Actually, it comes to the food. Food sovereignty is the right of people to healthy and culturally appropriate food produced through ecologically sound and sustainable methods, and their right to define their own food and agricultural system. Is today the food we are eating, is it dictated by the others or dictated by us? We don't have control on our food only. That is the status what we have reached today. And what are the other reasons? The farmers are migrating to cities, and the agricultural land is being fallow, and that's one reason. And all the you know, and 80,000 farmers are moving away to cities every year. And out of that, see in Tamil Nadu, 70% of Tamil Nadu farmers, 65% of Punjab farmers, 55% of UP farmers should have moved to cities by 2020. And then, when they move, what happens? Who is going to grow the food for us? Old people like me stay in the villages. Will they be in a position to uh, grow food for us? The other thing is, millions of hectares have been lost to industrialization, roads, industries, and so many things. So the cultivable land is getting reduced and the population is increasing. Can you imagine what is going to happen? The day we are going to depend on a foreign country for food, that is the second slavery what we are going to face. That is the state what we are reaching. And of course, the ladies who are here very well know about the rising cost of all the food products. And of course, why all this? See, being an entomologist, I have, should, I have to show this slide. See the position of insects. 
this depicting on the size of the insect, that is the population in this world. All the living organisms have been put onto this slide. And see the size of the insect. And 75 percent of this earth is occupied by insects. And they came about 250 million years before man came into this world. So who is the owner of this earth? It's the insect. And to kill that insect which comes on the crop, we use a lot of pesticides, poisons. And that is the poison, instead of killing them, it is affecting us. The first slide I showed, tomato ganesha, where DDT and BHC affected the fetal death or induced fetal death in a big mammals, what it can do to us. And that is the policy in organic terrace gardening is live and let live. We have to pay a rent of 10 to 15 percent for the insects. You cannot eliminate insects from this earth. Till today, no one has done. And see the size of the mammals, the red circle. There are 5,300 and odd species of mammals. Divide that into 5,300 pieces. One piece is human being. And that one piece is the one which is spoiling the entire environment. He is the one who is using the insecticides. He is the one who is uh, destructing the forests. And he is the one who is the cause of all the environmental change what is happening today. Okay, this is a very recent slide. See the percent allowed, red or the pink, by the FAO. Actually, food means it must be food without any contamination. But because of the lobby of the pesticide industry, they have allowed this 48 parts per million, 0.48 parts per million or 3.9. But see what actually is. 860 parts per million. How many thousand times it is more? That is the poison which is going into our body. What happens if it goes? I think this picture is a very popular picture. You might, I don't know how many of you have seen it. This happened very close to my state. That's in Kerala, Kasargod. This is called as endosulfan poisoning. As management student, probably you must have read about this. From past 30 years, they are using endosulfone as a spray for a casual. And from past seven years, they have seen the result. All the children born to the girl and the boy who marries from those five, six villagers, irrespective, they get a handicapped child. More so with hydrocephalus condition. So do you want that kind of a children for your future? So our purpose is to see that the young India must eat non-poisonous food. With that purpose, we started this NGO to start promoting growing your own food. So if we take example of only Bangalore, this is the real Bangalore. A lot of, I don't know how many of you have seen. Any peak hour you go. Now there is no peak hour. All the time it is the rush hour. And of course, all the others, migrating, pollution, everything. Bangalore used to be called as garden city, but today it's a garbage city. And it used to be called as air-conditioned city. Today it's a pollution-loaded city. And do you want all of our cities to be like this? It's left to you to decide. Okay, there's the garbage problem. There's one more what we are, you know, our terrace gardening, we teach them how to convert. Uh, organic waste into compost or vermicompost. See, our waste goes to a village and their health is spoiled. It's your waste. You try to learn how to manage that waste. Don't throw it into your villagers because they are the ones who are giving his food. This is Mandur in uh, Bangalore and the same is happening all over. Even in Delhi, it's a uh, mountain. So like that, it's happening all over. Then the water problem. We always recommend in ours to have a rainwater harvesting. If you use potable water to cultivate, Kaveri cannot supply water to Bangalore no more. So, coming to conclusion, not conclusion, coming to why we started terrace gardening, say the household waste, segregate them, 
convert them into compost, do the rainwater harvesting, collect it, and then grow your terrace garden. The advantage of terrace garden is you get fresh food every day for your kitchen. You need not have to use a fridge. Today you want for samba, go and harvest one or two vegetables and bring it. You just rinse it and use it because it's without any poison. So that's how we are recommending people to grow. Urban agriculture is critical link in ensuring sustainable growth. So this is a, what we have done in Bangalore and this is in Cuba. If you don't grow your own food, the future of your food will be this. One capsule for minerals, one for amino acids, one for uh, vitamins, and one for filling the stomach. If you allow this kind of a food, go ahead and do whatever you are doing today. Okay. And see, what's the benefits of this? We can harvest the uh, cities are slowly being developed with people migrating from villages. So learn from them. Actually, we know, every one of us know how to grow a plant. Because we all come from villages. You may think that you have come from Delhi or Bombay or Bangalore. But every family has migrated from a forest, about uh, hundreds or thousands of years back. So you have a gene of loving the plant. We and plants have grown together. So we know how to grow. We think we know how to grow. No, they grow. You take care of them. That's what is the principle of terrace gardening. You just throw a seed, they definitely grow. But you take care of them. And that's where your heart is involved. OK, these are some of the workshops what we conduct. And today we have about 23,000 followers on our Facebook, where in all over the world, and from Bangalore, we have nearly six to 7,000 terrace gardens, which have been initiated by us. And I think last uh, week, we had a meeting with the Department of Horticulture. They say that, I mean, they have also promoted, and they have about 6,000 people terrace gardens. Totally in Bangalore, there are more than 15,000 terrace gardens today. So we have taken it to the schools. Residences, of course, we have achieved. Schools, we have eight to us here, only about three schools have followed, but only one school is very systematically doing it from past seven years. And um, they not only they grow, they sell it to the teachers and the parents, and they multiply seeds and sell the seeds in our events. And then now we are trying to find, convince the office and the community gardens. And of course, again, three days back, we had a meeting wherein the alumni of the University of Agricultural Sciences has joined hands with us to spread it to 10 areas in and around Hebal and GKVK area. So uh, the government and everyone is supporting because it's the initiative of the Alumni Association of the university. And of course, the vice chancellor of uh, Shumaga Agricultural and Horticultural University has come forward to host an urban Krishi Mela in Shumaga. So our attempts are moving forward and we were the first people to do the national seminar on organic terrace gardening where we got uh, almost about 10 states participated and every state is doing it now. Of course, these are some of the examples but the one here and here is from Bangalore, this is from Kerala, this is from uh, Mumbai, this is again Bangalore, and this is again Mumbai. See, why I am showing this is almost all the states have started doing it. Even in Tamil Nadu, from last year, they are giving 25 pots for each family, which there is a special grant given by Pranab Mukherjee, who was a finance minister, to promote urban uh, vegetable growing. In that, all the states are doing it now. What is the way forward? See, India with its rich traditional knowledge also has world-class universities and institutions. We are requesting the central government and ICR to include this as a subject in the agricultural colleges and horticultural colleges. If not, start central institutes.
urban agriculture or urban farming so that four central on four corners of India can spread the message much quicker. Why we are telling this, we have already started moving it with the politicians. That is in Cuba, when I started in 1995, Cuba also started in 1995. Today, Cuba supplies 80% of its food from cities to the entire country. And we could not achieve even 1%. So we are trying to request them to see that it is done in the university so that the youngsters can take it as a and I'm happy to announce here that I get a lot of MBA students as a project. This one they come and discuss. Very recently there were some people from Gujarat and from Bangalore also. There is some MBA graduates who are developing an app for organic terrace gardening, a mobile application for that. Allocate space for urban agriculture when planning urban areas. This is being done in Bangalore now. And the new apartment people, they are trying to allow space for terrace gardening in the apartments and the individual houses. Some of the engineers have joined us, so they are doing it. Provide space in the existing parks for urban agriculture. This has been accepted yesterday's meeting, day before yesterday's meeting. And then encourage communities to engage in urban agriculture. This might additionally solve our garbage problem and encourage corporates, NGOs to get involved in this initiative. That's what we are trying to do now. Actually, we want to take up slums so that all the creeper vegetables can be given to them. They grow and it's a nutrition for them. Excess they can sell. It's an income also. And because it is 100% organic without using any poison. So urban farming, agriculture cannot be successful and sustainable without the involvement of government non-government agencies, corporates, educational institutes, and finally, you and me. If not, it will not be a success. In our every deliberations, we must consider the impact of our decisions on the next seven generations. Give Earth a chance. Grow what you eat, and eat what you grow. Thank you very much.